My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Dear, we're just getting on with it. You're gonna be seeing bits and pieces of me dipping in and out all week, because I really haven't got that much time, but I want to get this done. <laughs> so, um, in the bucket, uh, I pulled, uh, basically I pulled all the cross slide apart, uh, and I'm doing the citric acid trick. Um, did this on the, the fuel tank, and it took all the paint off, all the rust off, and everything, and the bucket, is bigger than the ultrasonic bath. So we're giving it a well. So in here, basically all I've got is, um, it's a mixture of citric acid and just water. So for every one liter of water, it's 10 grams of citric acid. However, my scale's broke, so I'm guessing. <laughs> be all right, be all right. Um, we've also got like an aquarium pump in there, just to keep everything moving around, and an aquarium heater just to warm it all up because heat definitely seems to help. Um, this thing, basically I've got a big hole in the front of the lathe. There wasn't a couple with it or anything else. I don't know what used to go on there. So I'm making basically just a, a light plate. So it's a two gang switch. Uh, and I will probably just use this for, at some point I'm gonna put like a coolant pump in there as well. So I can pump coolant onto whatever it is that I'm working. Um, and the other one will just be a working light. Um, it's probably not going to get wired up for a bit, but I don't want a big hole in the front of it and we're going to need this at some point anyway, so I'm just doing it now. And then I can paint it and stick it on and I'll just wire it up later on. That'll be fine. Um, cross slide was a doddle to get apart, it's just basically undo the gibbs and give it a squirt of WD-40 because it's full of sawdust and the whole thing just slides apart. So he's in there, he's been in there for about an hour, yeah about an hour. Um, and it's already starting to sort of clean up. Let me show you. Um, I think I put up a, a picture of when this all started, but you can see that the paint has started to disappear. Um, and sort of on the bare metal slides there, you can see a lot of the rust is starting to go. Um, this is just gonna get left in there for 24 hours. It worked a treat with the trank, so there's no reason why it shouldn't work with this. I have got more evapor rust coming, but I've got this now, so that's what I'm doing. Right, so the apron carriage assembly or whatever, it's, I've had it in the evapor rust, but I ain't got a lot in there anymore. I've got some more coming, it turns up on Wednesday, but what I'm thinking is I'm probably going to shove this through the citric acid once that lot finishes. Um, just because that will get all the paint and everything else off, give it a bit of a tidy up. Um, and if I need to finish it off in the evaporous when that comes, I can do so. But it's, it's not that, it's just got grot and stuff in it, like all the sawdust turned to varnish and blah, blah, blah. 
So it's probably going to need the evaporous treatment, I think, in the ultrasonic. But citric acid will get all the paint off. So that's probably what we're going to do. Stay tuned on that one. Um, started cleaning down loads of the covers and stuff. They're just going to get painted. So that's easy. I'll get that done tomorrow when I'm back in. Hopefully the cross slide will be done and I can just switch this out, you know, and, and start it going. Leave it 24 hours and we'll be in. Because then by the time it's done, the evaporust will be here and I can finish it off. And then I can either paint it or not, or just oil it or whatever. But either way, it's all going back together again with this lot. That's all the, the bits that comes off this. It's all oiled, although I do think I've got a hole in my bag. Because <laughs> oiling in it, it's everywhere now. Um, but then I can get all the, the apron reassembled, stick that back on, and then really it's only the headstock. Um, there ain't much to a headstock. It is heavy. <laughs> and it has got bearings in it, which you have to adjust to, you know, take out the slop and all this sort of stuff. Um, but get that on there, shove a drive belt on it, wire it up, and we are good to go, I think. There's not a lot left. There really ain't a lot left. Right then. Well, it's still blue, but the blue just scrapes off. Ideal. We'll have that out in a minute. Have a look, see. Sweet! What have we got here? <laughs> I got a minute. Right then. <laughs> See, I told you I was going to do it. <laughs> Get to that in a bit. Let's have a look in here and see what's what. Right, so this has been cooking overnight and you can see, if you scrape it, look, the blue comes off. All the paint is starting to come off, look. Um, this has been sitting here for like 24 hours. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do, it's gonna take a couple of days, isn't it? Right, okay, let's have that out of there. I'll give it a rub down with wire brush. See if we can't get a lot of the muck off. Poof it back in, because tomorrow I was supposed to have this evapor rust stuff coming, which will be the second one, but I really want to get that other carriage assembly in as well. So we'll find a bit of space, chuck it all in together and see what happens. got some fresh solution in there now the other stuff had gone green so I just replaced it with a new batch I'm gonna leave that in there for 24 hours now I have got the um, the main apron assembly in there as well you know with all those gears and stuff on the back so we can start trying to get the paint off it and we'll see where we go from there and I've also done a little bit of masking because that's gonna get painted but somebody did was it Keith I can't remember it could have been Keith no, it hasn't. See, he brought up something that I thought the same thing. This little slot on the motor, I thought it would have been keyed. I thought there would have been a key in there that goes into a brooch on this, this pulley, but there isn't a brooch. I just thought you would have had a key in there that this could slot onto so you get a more positive sort of engagement between the, the pulley and the motor, but there isn't one. So I was, well, I'd, see, I was, I was thinking the same thing that he was. That just seems a little bit hokey to me, just to have a grub screw in there on that. Then you can see where it's been nipped up and stuff. Um, but, yeah. Oh, well. What I might do, actually, at some point, is take this into work. Um because I think they've got a brooch in there. I haven't got one, I haven't got a hydraulic press, I haven't got a brooch, any of that lot. But I do like the idea of putting a, a slot in here. I suppose I could even file it. 
but file a slot into here, make a key that sits in this slot. So the whole thing just kind of slides together. Do I do that? I think it would be better. I do think it would be better. Um, what have I got? Um, pom, pom, pom. Would that fit? Tiny bit of wiggle room in it, but even so, I've got some other stuff I could make a slot out of that. Right. Might be doing that. Everything is basically stripped, oiled within an inch of its life, and currently dripping. <laughs> Carriage assembly is pretty much ready to go back together again now. Today has just been a day of um, basically cleaning it all up. I mean, you can see from here I've got, got all the paint off. It looks all right. Yeah, you can see all the guffs and everything else here. There was, there was loads of filler and that in here just to take up some of the the imperfections in the um, in the casting. So I've uncovered all that, and I must admit I do quite like it. <laughs> um, you know, it's never going to be pristine. This machine is going to work for a living. Um, so I don't mind a few battle scars. I think that just gives it a bit of character. So anyway, this whole thing has been oiled up. I've put the um, start wall well, started to put the cross slide together. Um, so it's just had the gibs in. Nothing's adjusted yet. It all needs to sort in. Um, but I need to chip off to me work in a sec. So the whole thing has just been oiled. It is currently dripping everywhere. It will stay like that until I'm back in again tomorrow. Then I'll just wipe the excess off the outside and start sticking it all back together again and get it on the lathe. That'll be good. Oh, tail stalk's gonna have to come off. Oh well, I won't take a minute. Um, I wanted to do this video so you get a sense of time. <laughs> this has been uh, like another day. Um, so the time is now 12 o'clock. I was in here at nine o'clock. Um, and most of that time has just been spent scrubbing and shoving stuff through the, the, the ultrasonic and letting it soak and, you know, 
giving it another scrub and getting a wire brush on it and it just takes bloody ages ages and ages and ages but what you see in a video is like a 20 minute doicky that looks like i've just had a fun afternoon we right in i've been at it all week <laughs> it's weird how you lose a sense of time it just doesn't come across in the videos and like because it's all in one video you try and keep the same t-shirt on and stuff like that yeah i ain't doing that anymore <laughs> but anyway back at this again tomorrow and we can get all this shove back together again hopefully and stick it on the lathe um and then see i was going to paint those covers and i just got completely run out of time they was going to get another coat but anyway what we'll probably do tomorrow once this is back on i'm starting on the headstock because that's the last big bit and i really want to try and get all of this done this week but we'll just have to see how we go anyway back tomorrow It's back together. For the crossfeed and it is the simplest thing ever where's my pin gone oh, where's it? oh there we go um i just wanted to show you some of this stuff because it, it is just so simple um so sprung loaded pin um he just goes in there so he's all moving free and then the clutch is in two halves so you've got these um sort of two bosses really i suppose one either side of the shaft and there's a slot in the top of this pin on either side so the idea is uh, I know it's going to be fiddly but you get one half goes in there and sits in his slot come on does it matter which way around they go um, slight angle on the corners there so he goes in that side like that um, he goes that way come on and then wiggle him into place see I knew this was going to be a cock So they're trapped in there in that slot and wind the handle on the back come on there we go so as you tighten this up essentially it just pulls that pin through and it flattens out those two sort of semicircular bits of metal which force the boss outwards to engage with the gear and that's it, it all just locks up. And then to release it, you just release the pressure on the on the pin. That's it, that's the clutch. <laughs> this bit was annoying. 
There's a retaining screw that goes in the end here. Yeah, that's a left-handed thread. That took me a little while to figure out in the first one when I was trying to pull it all apart. <laughs> Sneaky buggers. But if you think about it logically, it has to be a left-handed pin. That's how I figured it out. <laughs> Make sure he's done up and snug this one down. Right, so I've got all the, the apron done up again. That's all back on, as you can see. Uh, it's all hooked up, half nuts engaged, and the clutch works, and all that other stuff. Um, I've got the cross slide on, I've got the compound on, and then I've had an oh my God moment. Because <laughs> I came to fit in this. This is the screw which goes through the cross slide. It runs from front to back on the machine. Uh, and basically, you wind this bit into a brass boss, and then obviously this hooks up with the drive gears um, for the for the for the sort of automatic feed. Um, and then on here, there's supposed to be a casting that comes out with your hand wheel and all the rest of it. Um, now this machine was adapted. The only thing it's ever really cut up is rubber tubing. So um, this was part of the adaptation. This fits. That's fine. It's just I haven't got the casting and the hand wheel and everything else. However, when I bought it. Matey gave me this. I thought, ideal, that'll bolt straight on. It don't. <laughs> Couple of problems with it. Um, the thread on this is very slightly different to the thread on this, so it don't go through. That's not a problem, I thought. I'll just have that bit out. I'll stick this one in. Job's a good one. Um, then we come to the second problem. This, from there out, has got a very slight bend to it which I'm not having, it's bent. So that's not a good thing to start off with. Um, then the next oh my god moment is this casting here doesn't fit on the cross slide. Essentially this just goes straight where the, the casting I need kind of comes up and it goes into the, the, this bit needs to come up and there's holes in here which actually mount into the body of the cross slide. So I can't actually fit this So I can't use it. Um, I've had a chat with um, Tony from um, Lays.co.uk. These are like rocking all shit, apparently. <laughs> they have a machinist who actually makes all this stuff because he's got a lathe and he's got some specialist tooling and various other bits and pieces. And he can make all these castings and whatnot. And, you know, he can do all the shaft and blah, 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 and you can just buy them off him. They've got about 12 people that want these now. 
and their machinist is currently been poorly for a very long time and they haven't had anything out of him in months so I doubt I'm going to get one from there so I need a bit of help <laughs> does anybody know where I can get one of these um, I'm going to go on uh, eBay and start grubbing around and see what I can find but without this I'm a bit snookered um, the machines from 1963 you would think there'd be quite a lot of them well apparently not because there's a queue of 12 people at least who want one and haven't got one yet so if anybody knows where I can get one of these I would love to hear from you drop a comment give us a shout drop me a message do something but I need one of these because otherwise I can't get the lathe going that was the oh my god moment <laughs> But, you know, full of hope and everything else, I am going to find one somehow. Or I'll find someone who can make one or, or something. I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to carry on with the rest of it. But the time is getting on. It's, it's nearly one o'clock now. Um, and I need to tip off to my work. So I'm going to be back tomorrow. Right, so it is now Friday. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? it takes ages all this stuff um just giving this another coat of paint i've painted the outside of the, the gear cover as well that's going to need another coat but i'll do that tomorrow when i'm in so anyway i've been thinking about this um this casting because you can't get them you can't get them at all but the whole point of getting a lathe was so i could make stuff rather than having to pay for it and buy it online so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a go at making one so to do it properly i'm going to need to have the lathe working so i've got a big old chunk of alley over there which i'm hoping is big enough i haven't checked yet but i'm going to make a temporary one just so i can get the lathe working it will be boxy and it will not look that good it ain't going to be rounded or anything because it's going to be done on the mill um but i reckon i could make something which will get get the lathe working so it's operational and then once it's all working i can use a combination of the mill and the lathe and make a decent one which will do the job why are you running oh that's because i've ladled it on isn't it right so yeah that's what i'm going to do um as far as the pin goes it is a little bit bent it is bent it's about um it's only like two mil i suppose which ain't a great deal but i know it's there and it will just do my head in <laughs> so a couple of options there we're going to try and get it straightened i'm going to have a chat with the fellas in work see what goodies they've got that could help out in the machine room um and i'm either gonna try and get it straightened to the point where it's you know it's good enough. I mean, it's only like a screw for the cross slide. It ain't got to be dead nuts on or anything else. But if I can get it straight, I want it straight. So we'll have a go there. Failing that, what we could do is get it ground. Because it's only the, like the final bit of the shaft, the skinny bit, which I think is bent. So um, if I get it ground, then all I'll have to do is when I make the new casting, uh, I'll just get a bit of brass or something. Oh, poo, I just painted that you dingleberry. That side. Um, so, yeah, we'll get it ground down. And then when I come to do the casting, I'll get a piece of brass and I'll just make a bush into running it. Um, and I'll just machine it to fit, basically. So I should end up with like, a homemade casting that looks quite good. It's not a casting, I know. But it should look quite good. It will be in keeping. And it will do the job. So that's what I'm doing.
So, got another little problem. On this side, there's a locking room um, that uh, goes up to the collar that compresses all the spindle bells. Um, and it's a stupid bloody thing as well. One, it's round. So you can't put spans on it or anything else. I'm not trying to do it, sorry. I'm not going to chew it up. Um, but it's a locking room and it's just got holes in it. So there isn't anything I've got that I can really get a purchase on it to undo the thing. I did stick a drill bit in it, uh, mostly for sizing really, 4mm holes. And I ain't got anything that's got a 4mm bar, like a C-spanner or something like that. Um, that will fit it so I can actually get the locking ring off. Um, but I shoved the tool bit in it and I thought, oh, I don't know, maybe it's like just nipped up, same as everything else in this machine that I've found so far. It ain't. I'm not about to mill or drill, but I mean, the drill is designed for that. I was just hoping that it would shift it. So I'm not going to mill on the drills. Um, so the only thing I can really do is give it a damn good clean because it is filthy and it's full of junk. Um, so give everything a clean and then see if I can shift it. If I can't, then this is just going to get put a coat of paint over what I can get to, clean up what I can get to. I'm going to pack, I've got a uh, high pressure grease gun, so, um, what is it, these things here, they're grease nipples, take these covers off and you can force the grease through, so I'll be able to replace it with the grease. Um, and then I'm going to have to make a tool to do the job. So that's project number two, isn't it? <laughs> that's two things you've got to make for it. Um, I think you can get like some shops have a a collar similar to that, but just with holes in. I think the Maxton ones do stuff. Oh, well, I don't know. I have seen them though, um, so I know there's tools out there you can do. So I might just have a look online, see if I can get a C spanner that would fit it. It has a pin instead of a peg. That would do the job. Otherwise, what I'm probably going to do is once it's all going. I'll machine up um, like a cup that goes over the top of it with some holes in strategic places that I can shove a couple of pins in. Um, cut a hole in the end of it and make it the same size as the torque wrench. And that way I'll be able to get it undone and when I've redone all the grease and done whatever else it is I'm going to do in there, just you know, have all this got out properly in the little thing, then I'll be able to torque it up get it all adjusted properly and I'll know what torque stack I need to tighten it up to just for future reference. So there won't be any goofing about, you just do it up to a certain torque stack and your rig is done and it'll be consistent and it'll be the same every time I do it. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, I wouldn't advise trying to get unstuck, you know, stuff undone with drill bits because they will snap. And I didn't tweak it a lot at all. I was just hoping it was going to sort of break free, but it didn't. <laughs> well, never mind. Right, so that's it for this one then. Um, this, ooh, hello. Wow, it was mucky before anyway. <laughs> um, that cover needs another coat of paint. That one's done. Headstock is cleaning up all right, so I'll get that finished off tomorrow. I'll get a coat of paint on it and we'll start doing all that. Um, I've heard back from Matt, he's off all next week. So at some point next week, um, I'm hoping he's gonna come in and he's gonna sort out the wiring for me because I ain't got a clue about that contactor thing. I've never seen one before. There's connectors all over it. I don't know what I'm doing. So he's gonna sort that out for me, which is sweet. I've had a call from uh, Steve-O. He's been down the local scrappy and he's got me loads of little bits of offcuts and stuff. So I've got something to play with. And yeah, you just practice turning things down to size and get used to the controls and what does what and you know, feeds and speeds and all that other stuff. I've, there's loads of goofing about I need to do once I've got it going. Um, but realistically, headstock, that'll all get cleaned up and painted tomorrow. It's gonna need time to dry before I reassemble it. So that'll happen during the week, next week sort of thing. And tomorrow I can have a go at making that um, temporary casting thing for the cross slide because I do want to get that sorted 
Um, I'm going to take the shaft into work with me today and see if there's anything they can do. Um, but I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. And if, even if it is a case of grinding it down and making it slightly thinner, you know, just that last little bit, then I can make the casting to fit and, and spin up a bushing. You know, and we should be good. It should be fine. It should be absolutely fine. But I need to, I need to get it done. Um, realistically, I want this going next week. There's no reason why it couldn't be. Um, and then I can start making stuff. Um, I want all that done and dusted and out of the way because Steve-O is definitely, definitely, definitely... Where's my teeth? It's over there. I am gonna wear that tomorrow though. He is definitely back next week and we are doing stuff on the bike because we need to, we need to sort out geometry. Got the rear shot working, that all needs to be done. We've got dog bones we can play about with and try and get things back in the ballpark and I've got a plan as to how I'm going to do it so you'll have to wait for that video. But that's what I, that's what I want to be doing. Bike stuff, not lathe stuff. This is a bike channel. <laughs> Hopefully you've got a sense of what it's like trying to put one of these videos together. It's, it's not just like a little, oh he had a fun afternoon in, in the workshop and stuff and did a video. No, it takes ages. Ages and ages and ages. Today, well, I was in here half past nine. I had to sort the post out, a couple of phone calls, bits and pieces. I didn't really start until 10. It's now 12.30, so I need to chip off. Um, but, you know, it, once you start deciding you're going to film stuff and you've got stuff you've got to say and all that other thing, it just eats into your time like anything. And it really drags it out. So your little short video that you get every week takes all week to put together <laughs> oh, I don't mind this is a lot of fun I'm, I'm loving this but yeah you just got to get a sense of the time involved basically I would love to do more but I just can't there aren't enough hours in the day and I've got to work so there you go but anyway that's where I'm going to leave it thank you ever so much for watching hope you're all safe and we'll see you again next time Laters.